Marvel movies are great, but their characters are usually just a screen-friendly shadow of their ink and paper origins. While some are spot on, the Avengers movies' costumes don't always do the originals justice. Here's how the Avengers should really look. Hawkeye and Black Widow For the big screen, Clint Barton dropped his pointy mask and traditional uniform for a tactical look. But in 2012, Hawkeye's comic costume was redesigned to look more like the film's version, and less like a scaly purple wolverine. Both versions of Hawkeye are master marksmen and former agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but movie Hawkeye has a secret civilian family, while comics Hawkeye gets around with romantic relationships with Black Widow and Mockingbird, aka Bobby Morse. Fun fact, Mockingbird later appeared on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but in a completely different relationship. On the other hand, after Black Widow's comics outfit underwent a significant change in Amazing Spider-Man No. 86, she's barely changed her modern look. Both comic book and MCU versions share the basics. Red hair, black bodysuit, and wrist-mounted weapons. They're nearly identical in the ways that matter. Despite appearing in five different movies, we still don't know much about movie Black Widow. Age of Ultron's flashbacks revealed a little of her history, specifically her training to be a Soviet assassin from a young age. She switched sides after Hawkeye spared her life and has been a good guy ever since. Her comic counterpart has the same broad strokes, including her Soviet training and defection to America. Pretty sure that Natasha has never been Tony Stark's assistant in the comics, though. Captain America and Falcon MCU Captain America is undeniably classic Cap, but his costume often changes subtly, like his shield. Originally, it was simply, well, shield-shaped. Soon, it evolved into the frisbee he flings today. In all the ways that count, the MCU's Captain America is almost completely comic faithful. In the movies, Cap's a patriotic mascot before he becomes a hero, even using a shield similar to his early comic appearances. In the comics, Cap goes undercover as a bumbling private who sent on secret missions. Since then, Comic Cap has lost his powers, regained them, died, undied, and even thought he was a Hydra agent. So movie Cap's got plenty to look forward to. In the comics, Cap's longtime partner, the Falcon, wears a funky super suit with enormous red wings and a plunging neckline, resulting in plenty of unprotected bare chest. Movie Falcon is a somewhat more realistic ex-paratrooper in army clothes and a set of highly advanced technological wings. Not a military man, Comics Falcon is an ex-criminal who was mentally fused with a falcon by the Red Skull. Like Aquaman, but on land. Falcon has limited control over all birds. If you ever see Falcon hanging around a pack of ostriches, just run. Interestingly, it remains to be seen if we'll ever see Sam Wilson wield the shield, like he did in the comics in 2014. Thor Thor's first appearance in 1962 featured the largest helmet wings you've ever seen, and knee pads that make a goalie blush. Movie Thor occasionally wears the helmet and makes the practical choice to cover his arms in armor. And that beard? Comics Odin's son generally prefers a clean shave. Interestingly, the movies largely ignore Thor's one-time alter ego, Donald Blake. Originally, Thor suffered amnesia and was trapped in the body of a disabled doctor for years before accidentally rediscovering his hammer. He also fell for Nurse Jane Foster, who is obviously a far cry from the MCU's storm-chasing Jane. In fact, pick up a recent comic book and you'll be surprised to discover that Jane Foster is Thor. Jane Fost Thor. Heh. <laughs> Comics are complicated. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver The MCU created a less revealing costume for its Scarlet Witch. In the comics, she wears a skimpy bodysuit and a weird headdress. Fortunately for Marvel's MPAA rating, her on-screen costume is more autumn fashion collection than Naughty Magician's assistant. Also kind of different, her powers. In the comics, she wields chaos magic, while in the movies her abilities are a lot less defined. She basically and pretty inconsistently changes probability good for Vegas. Not always great at fighting an army of Ultrons. Still better than the 90s Iron Man animated series Scarlet Witch, though. Yeesh. Comics Quicksilver has worn a lot of costumes, ranging from a green with a lightning bolt all the way to blue with a lightning bolt. The movies cleverly and subtly incorporated the pattern, so this is another instance where we're glad they ditched the spandex. Sure, Quicksilver is really, really fast, that's hard to screw up. He also started out his career as a villain before joining the Avengers, not unlike the MCU's version. Though Comics Quicksilver doesn't die in his first adventure. Instead, he marries an inhuman woman and has a full life. Let's not even touch Ultimate Quicksilver and his romantic relationship with his sister. Let's leave that for Star Wars, shall we? Ugh. Vision. On the page, Vision's an android with a simple design, bright red face, green and yellow costume. It's punctuated with a solar jewel on his forehead. Movie Vision is distinctly more robot-like, covered with mechanical patterns, as though the designers wanted folks to be sure that this guy's a robot. The giant yellow comics collar, gone. 
The biggest difference is that while Vision's solar jewel is powerful in the comics, it's nothing like the Infinity Stone his live-action counterpart wears. On the other hand, Vision and Scarlet Witch are an item in both the comics and the movies. Ah, uh, romance. Hulk. Movie Hulk and Comics Hulk are both big green rage monsters, but MCU Hulk leapfrogged over his original look. When Bruce Banner first transformed, he was gray. Hulk soon turned green, but occasionally turned gray again, switching wildly between smart and stupid depending on the color and whatever the writers wanted to do at that time. Comics Hulk became irradiated during the heroic act, but Movie Hulk turns into a monster because of a failed science experiment. It took years for Comics Hulk to change from a semi-intelligent gray dude into an incoherent green dude. But Hulk's film transformation omitted Hulk's sad decline into madness. He just started out stupid. And that Black Widow romance? You know, the one that came out of nowhere? Straight up movie bunk. Black Panther. Prince T'Challa hasn't changed much, usually just some variation on black spandex. Occasionally he makes a mouth hole and sometimes he rocks a cape, necklace of teeth, or gold accoutrements. Movie Panther is much of the same so far. In the comics, Wakanda wasn't known to the US until it traps the Fantastic Four, but by the time we meet movie Black Panther, his country's already set up diplomatic relations with the rest of the world. Sadly, we'll never see Black Panther's marriage to X-Men Storm, because those movie universes just can't touch. Ant-Man. During Ant-Man's early comic appearances, he had the spandex and underwear look, and his helmet was a huge silver dome. Solid sci-fi, but bad on the big screen. Fortunately, the movie hero's outfit looks much more like a high-powered fight suit. While both helmets have an ant-like appearance, the MCU version nails it. There's more than one Ant-Man in both the MCU and the comics. Comics Hank Pym hung with the original Avengers, and Scott Lang later stole the suit from Pym to help his family, which should sound familiar. The movies mix and match timelines, Ant-Man, and evil corporations, but it's hard to argue with the awesome results. Spider-Man. Since debuting in Civil War, Spidey's accurate super suit made fans crazy happy. No raised webbing, no energy drink logos, just pure Spider-Man. Still, MCU Spidey has some weird half-belt. What's that about? Like most other comic heroes, Spidey has worn roughly a million different costumes since his first appearance, but his current MCU costume is a totally fair average of the classic red and blues. War Machine and Iron Man Also known as Grey Iron Man, War Machine's always been a variation on Tony's armor. Movie War Machine is extremely comic accurate, but the Iron Patriot's a different story. In Iron Man 3, Rhodey's armor gets a patriotic paint job, but in the comics, the Iron Patriot is actually Norman Osborn, better known as the Green Goblin. Osborn is, of course, completely insane, and the armor provided an extra layer of protection from public scrutiny. Because how could anyone waving an American flag possibly be evil? Movie Iron Man is damn near perfect. Even though Tony's changed armors more times than most people change their underwear, his film's armors are really comic accurate. And under the armor, Robert Downey Jr. was born for that role. Still, the cocky billionaire from the movies is a caveman compared to comic book Tony, who is recently flying around in his bleeding edge armor, which is conveniently stored inside his body. Not gross at all. Kind of makes that armor suitcase in Iron Man 2 look like a pile of fancy trash. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which is your favorite Marvel costume.